was noisy, huh? Ugh. Oh, I hit something I shouldn't have. That's noisy. Okay. So, you'll see this after my birthday. My birthday will be tomorrow. Ugh. I'm not telling you how old I am, just guess. All I can say is that I'm not young anymore. <laughs> Okay, so the last video I posted was that one when I was playing that uh, Polka Dot V, another custom one that I got. And the first jack off that posted anything is like, dude, that neck is a piece of crap from an 80s guitar called a Mako. Wrong, idiot. So I try, I'm like, prove it. Because I know it wasn't a Mako. I, I, I thought I said in the video, but I didn't make it clear. That the body and neck were purchased, I think, from Warmoth. Warmoth? Warmoth? Whatever the hell you want to call them, guitars. The neck was a blank. There was no inlays or anything because the guy was going to do his little Randy Rhodes tribute thing. This is the Polka Dot V I got. It's a smaller body, the actual right size for him. It's got an 80s Kaler, a Seymour Duncan distortion in 59. And then a custom uh, Mother of Pearl inlay that says RR with wings. And the neck is, was, is a uh, made for a replacement neck for uh, Ibanez. But he did an extra cut. So, see, I had to fr dig up all the information, find out when, when did I buy this, and which was a long time ago. And the guy was doing it, so, and I'm like, why did you get rid of it? Because it's a nice guitar, and you did a really good job. He goes, that was my test. He goes, at first I wanted to see how hard it was going to be to do the polka dots. It wasn't as hard as I thought, but yeah, it is, the one that I got is fine. It's just, it's, there's none on the back. He just did the front to see if he could do it. How hard it was going to be, how many coats, you know, all that crap. He did a really good job. I mean, look at the damn video. And then, uh, but he just, once he got that part and put the body and the neck together, and he's like, yeah, that looks good. Then he went on to build a full, you know, neck. Uh, well, actually, I, I go, so did you get to do a neck through? Or no, he did a, you know. He attached the neck. You know, what do you call it? It's there's not if it's not a neck through, it's a whatever. So that's what he did. And he made another one and he kept that one for himself. So I got his test. So he figured, you know, okay, I know what to do. He did an incredible job on the inlay, but it he wanted a, you know, single piece guitar. He didn't want uh, the bolt on. I'm like dude, I love bolt ons. To me, bolt-ons are superior. But this, like this one, this is a set neck. Like this is probably a set neck. It is a set neck guitar, but you know, set neck, uh, neck through, bolt-on, it's all horse crap, really. It depends mainly on what kind of wood. Do you have crap wood with a, a nice cap? Do you have a solid, like my first guitar is solid, one solid piece of maple. Hard rock maple. Beautiful. But it sounds badass because it's one solid piece. This one's probably two pieces. I can't tell because Washburn, and this is a Washburn. This is the Washburn 333. And when I got it, it had washburn pickups and the only thing I did different was dump in uh, the dime time Seymour Duncan dime time put a 59 in there and uh, yeah because I took out the washburn so 59 put the tape in tape on there just to make it got the kiss sticker on there that sticker I put on and then I did uh, 
Well, that's the input, but I put the input on the back just for the hell of it. And then... There. And that. So this, that, those, and all, you know, just spruced it up. But this is a high in guitar. See the neck? See the binding? This is very, 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 very nice. I would put it up against any Dean, because all Deans to me suck. That's just my opinion. It's not, you know, I don't have to go with it, but to me, all Deans suck. I bought a few of them. I've got like four of them. Uh, all, I think all of them are dime except for one. And, but I bought the 79, you know, the ML, like, kind of tribute to him. But it doesn't have, you know, I just wanted to play an ML like he had and then put his pickups in. And that thing is, sounds great and it plays great, but it, the neck is just... Blah, 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 blah. Deans have always sucked. That's why they went out of business. They didn't exist in the 80s. And then Dime comes out in the late 80s, early 90s, playing two Deans that he won in contests because he couldn't give them away, which they literally did give them away. He won both those guitars. And then, and Randall, that's why he played Randall, because he won those in guitar, you know, playing contests. But this is turning into a dime thing, but hey, why not? Let's give Randy Rhodes a break here. This is all I'm going to say about the Randy Rhodes thing. I did the Randy Rhodes birthday thing, and uh, uh, can't remember who, but someone gave me some good, uh, you know, it's like, maybe you should talk about this and put it in your title, da da da, and you get more subscriptions and uh, stuff like that, views. And he is exactly right. There's stuff I talk about that I don't put in the title that would obviously get people to, you know, look. So I did uh, one long video, which was basically a you know a half hour and then some extra part two and then I the part three was the newscast because as I was uploading the videos my friend called me and said they're gonna they're gonna report about finding Randy's stolen stuff you know at that time we didn't know how much was found da 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 as it was Sunday I didn't I didn't get home till late so I didn't have the news on all day it's Sunday so I know to most people it's like so but for me I got a lot that I do that's you know that I do on Sunday so and, and watching the news is one of the things I don't do so he called he said it's gonna be on at this time so I was ready I had my camera even I'm like fine I'll tape it beep and turns out you know still missing the first guitar still missing the you know two heads so Everybody's got their theories. Everybody's got their little, I think this is what happened. And, you know, when you go on, when you're a member of all these Randy Rhodes sites that I just got kind of sucked into by, you know, hey, do you want to join? Sure, why not? And at the time when they first started, it sounded like a cool idea. But now there's a million of them. And some of them are really weird. I mean, the people that run them are really, like, trippy. So I'm like, whoa, you know, Randy Rhodes is just a guy. He was just a guitar player. He was not a god. He was a very good guitar player. He would have been a great, he would have went on to probably great things. But what he did in that short amount of time is amazing. Anyways, people are really getting caught up in it. And they really trip out and they get all obsessed and freaked out. Anyway, so... I don't care. I just, all I think about is personal stuff, like talking to him or talking to his mom. And my mom and his mom talking a lot after that, after he was gone, they talked for hours because she had, she didn't know who to talk to. And uh, she would say, you know, your son kind of reminds me of Randy. And then off they would go and start talking and, sh and Dolores would just unload tons of stuff on my mom and my mom you know got it so because my mom's lost
kids too. I don't talk about it, but yeah. So I got a, I got a brother, died. So um, James Douglas. So there. That's, so my mom knows what it's like to lose a kid. I don't. That's something I hope I never have to deal with. Um, but anyways, getting back to Randy. So I taped it, and then I made a stupid comment. Like, hmm. Because it is kind of suspicious. To me, really, it turns up the day, you know, Ozzy announces it. A couple hours later, a lady walking down an alley finds it. And then there was apparently another lady that was a trash, you know, just going through the trash, picking stuff out. But I thought the trash had just been emptied a few days earlier. I don't know. Because I did call in my thought to the police. And they, it was like they could give a flying crap. But I told them, I, go, I think this is what might have happened. I don't know. I think this, this person, you might want to talk to this person. And they said, sure. And they go, well, yeah, we, you know, we got several people who are investigating. Da, 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 da. All right, fine. Great. I did my part. All I want is, you know, truth be told, you know, the Rhodes family was very, is very nice. The sister, very, very nice. And Dolores was just an angel. And uh, Kathy's husband, great guy. Really great guy. Very nice. I, I love talking to him. Doug, I haven't talked to, or Kelly, it's been years, it's been like three or four years, you know, but, you know, that's his problem, not mine. If he wants to be friends, I'm fine. If he doesn't, <laughs> I'm fine. It's not that big a deal to me. So, but I just get caught up in the nostalgia of it, and, you know, and what, what could have been and all that crap, and yeah, sure, I like Randy, and I listen to the stuff, and... It's obviously an influence on me, and I bought all those guitars, but I bought those guitars because I collect guitars. I got all the dime guitars, too. Almost all of them. And uh, all the Kiss guitars. I got all those. But I just get, I keep getting sucked into the Randy Rhodes thing now. I don't know why. Because it only, I know if I put a Randy Rhodes video out, it's going to give me that many views, and that's it. So I put it out videos that has to do with my Kiss guitars or other things or Motley Crue. I get a lot more views. So I know Randy. There's a certain audience that I'll get, and it's not that big. And there's people that get bigger because they're at it all the time. That's their life. So I shouldn't have said the comments that I did afterwards. So even the comments. I called the police. I'm like, hey, you know, people are, he's like, dude, just friggin' edit that out. Just, you can keep the other part up. Just edit it out. Don't, don't make comments. You know how stupid people are on the internet. I go, you're right. So, I cut off my comments. So that's it. And then it's not really important because, you know what? It's only crap. And do you think Randy or his mom care? If you really actually think that they care that what's happening, you're wrong because they don't they're off totally you know not caring about what's going on here like that stuff like that i believe me if it's keeping you up at night don't let it because it ain't worrying them just relax they're fine and if you don't believe in anything if you're, you know, an atheist or, you know, whatever, and you believe in nothing or the ether, then, uh, then it really doesn't matter, does it? Remember, I don't talk about politics or religion, and that's I'm starting to get into a religious, or not religious, but spiritual matters, which will, you know, people take as a religious bubble stance. Okay, we're not here talk about that stuff we're here to talk about guitars guitar players me 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 and other guitars and guitar players so today i thought i'd pull the dime out i don't like to you know like oh the 8th of september is a sucky day so i don't just like you know march 19th sucks so i don't 
do anything on that day because it sucked. It's not a fun day to remember. I don't like remembering that day. December 6th is a good day. It's his birthday, my dad's birthday. It's all good. December 11th, my birthday, Nikki Six's birthday. Good for Nikki. He's got the same birthday as me. So here's the story. It's December 11th, 1981. The album is out. Me and my friend George are down there, you know, bugging Mick. But they're all staying around. They, none of them are leaving after the show. They're all signing the friggin' album because they're selling the albums after the show. But, uh, you know. So I'm sitting, me and my friend are sitting with Mick, and we went around and got all our autographs from everybody. Everybody's very cool. And Tommy, when he was signing his, some guy walked by one of the roadies, Stick. And he took the pen and he started scribbling it. Tommy's like, dude, this is this guy's album, dude. That's not cool. He's like, here, let me make it look like it's part of something that I did. And I'll connect my name to it. And I'm like, that's when Tommy was cool. I haven't really talked to Tommy in, truthfully, the 80s. Not 87 when we were doing blowing at Audible. That's the last time that I really talked to him, so... But what I've heard, that's that's Tommy's, you know, life and career, pretty much. stadium tour I think is a very bad idea I think Poison and Joan Jett on the bill are even worse than Def Leppard really think Motley spew if you're gonna do I know what they're doing they're covering their A's because to do 22 stadiums in a summer is not easy for anybody and now they're gonna so they're bringing in padding they're gonna pad themselves in the middle because I think Def Leppard's going to close, so, you know, Motley will have their hour and a half or whatever. And Because Mick is not looking forward to this. I'm telling you, Mick is not looking forward to this. He is not. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't care about the money. It's not worth it. He's set. And I think uh, even Vince Neil, when he played here, like, last year, you could tell he, was, he wasn't really into it there. So he's like, eh, he was going to retire. He was like, ah, I'm done. You could tell on stage he was done. He's like, oh, this was a bad idea. And he stopped the tour. So, I'm telling you. Nikki wants to get back out on the road. But he knows that 6 a.m. can't pull in crowds. And that when he goes out to book them, they get thrown in the front of a festival opening because they're nothing 6 a.m. has one or two good songs out of all the albums they put out that's my opinion so he knows the only way to get in front of uh, thousands of adoring fans is to put Motley Crue back out there they all know that and Mick doesn't care because he's set Tommy would like it so he's he's up for it of course and you know who knows what's powering him 
And Nikki is going to get back into shape now. Look at you just had a kid. You're going to be a grandfather or something. Dude, start acting like it. Stay home and be a family man. You don't have to go out on the road and prove to anybody that you're anything. Because you're really not anything anymore. You haven't been since 1984, sucker. How do you like that? To me, in my head, Molly Crew was over after Shout at the Devil. When Theater of Pain came out, I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, so they're jumping on the glam thing quick because they knew Hanoi Rocks, if they would have made it over here, would have been the kings of glam because they already were. They weren't just, they kept putting out crap albums, but the one that they were getting ready to release, uh, Two Steps from the Move, would have put them over the top and they would have been pretty damn big. But... As we all know, Razzle was killed, and they decided to uh, stop touring. Why? Get another drummer and get out there and do it. Same thing happened in New York Dolls, which they patted themselves after. You shouldn't do that. Don't pattern yourselves after New York Dolls, because you'll have the same curse as they did. <laughs> song to see or I'm writing it I'm gonna go do the guitars over but uh, there you go there's a little preview I think I'm gonna change the chorus and I want to put that lick in there so anyways bad mistake commenting on the road stuff and if I knew or if I why would I blast it all over the internet what if I'm wrong so no I'm not telling of course to us no and of co and you know you know they the police have got plenty of leads they're gonna get the guy or guys or people believe me because there's too many people out there you know wanting this to that it's not cool it's not cool the Rhodes family is out there for the fans even Dougie gets out there and he and he does stuff and that's not easy man everybody is always coming up to you asking you about your brother who passed away 30 something years ago and now it's happening to that nephew and he's he never even knew him he wasn't even born so it's got to be a tough thing just you think about it from their point of view i was going to ask you know kelly doug if he wanted to do a, a mini documentary because i know a guy that'll do it you know the view from my side of the road. R H O A D. Still might, still might do it because see, all he does is he sits and he has to talk about this and that and the other. And I know he's trying to get Musonia going again, but the thing is, I don't know how many people have been there, but it's in a very bad area, and he really needs to put a big time. Just go to Fry's and get you know the cameras. And have cameras all throughout the friggin' place, and they get a good security system. It's not that expensive. And they know they got the money, I think. I don't know anything, really. I, I haven't really talked to them in a, in a while. Sometimes, I don't know, this year, but I don't run down there talking to the sister or 
Doug, well, me and Doug are having our little difference, but can I run down to the 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 Gen the Argenzio winery thing and talk with him every week or every month or every whenever? This is not my thing, and since I get asked so many questions, that's why I keep doing Randy Rose videos because I'm trying to answer stuff. But there's always more. So today we're gonna not do so much, Randy. We're gonna just jam. I'm think I'm done. I explained the Randy Rose thing, the comment. No, I'm not saying anything. I've already talked to the police. Whoever this idiot at Las Vegas community jerk hole that's commenting on the video, he's a he's a goof off. Whoever that person is, who cares? You 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 hide your your anonymity screws you. So I think that means something. Anyways, enough. Let's have some friggin' a uh, little bit of noise. Just bear with me, and then I'll say some. Oh well, so did I finish the story? So anyways. Right, it's my birthday. It's Vic Nikki Six's birthday. I didn't know it was Nikki Six's birthday anyway. So it's, we're all backstage, and Nikki goes, "Yes, yeah, today's my birthday. I'm 24 or five or whatever it was in 1981, December 11th, 1981." And I'm like, "Hey, it's my birthday too. I'm 17, or I'm turning 17." He's like, "Get him a double shot of Jack Daniels. Get me a double shot of Jack Daniels." And so I'm like, "Oh my gosh." I'm going to die because I never, you know, I only drank beer up to that point. Now I got to do a double shot in front of this whole band and everybody backstage and not throw up. I was terrified. So Nikki gets it and we cheers and he, boop, he goes down. And I'm like, and I look at my friend who's, you know, Mormon. I'm Mormon, too, you know, but he's strict. He doesn't drink at all. And I'm like, Whoa. He's like, just throw it out. I'm like, hey, shit. I'm like, and I got it down. <laughs> Holy crap, that sucked. So the next time I got lit up on Jack Daniels was the day, I, or the day uh, Randy Rhodes, you know. So the first time I tasted it was just December 81. And then. March 82, I had like a couple of uh, glasses of Jack and Coke, and oh man, my head was in the toilet all night. It sucked. But you know, I got used to that pretty quick. And soon, by the time I was 19, I was down in a bottle, and you know, in the morning, first thing, I drink six tall cans of beer, and then I did get a pint or half pint and. Then I was off to the races.